Good morning. It's uh, 1030, 1030-ish Labor Day. I almost said the date and I wasn't sure. September 3rd. Um, I decided to, uh, to go ahead and play the 911 call that was made the day that I was arrested. Now I was arrested on January 4th, 2018. I've been asking, I'm doing my best not to badmouth my attorney, but I'm just stating what's going on. I've been asking what kind of evidence we can use, what kind of uh, camera footage we can get, body camera footage, all these different things to to prove this, these people were stalking and harassing me. I had a right, I had a, a there's a reason I was in fear. Um, and to show that I'm being set up for this. So the, uh, the 911 call is public record. Uh, anyone can get it through a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act, you can get this through FOIA. Please do save it. Um, but I'm going to play it here. And I finally got this in uh, eh, just about four or five days ago. Um, but it was requested in June. So, but my first knowledge of this was in at the very end of August, after I was supposed to uh, make a decision on whether or not to accept a plea deal or not. Okay, so if. I'm moving a little slower this morning than uh, I am sometimes when I do these videos. So if you haven't been following my videos, I learned what targeting and this program, I st what basically what was going on, what this was. I started researching it, I started reaching out to people, networking with other targeted individuals, and I started video documenting what was going on in November of 2017. Uh, at the end of November, I'm sorry, in December, about the first week of December, somewhere around there, I was in one of the convenience stores here near my house. There was a police officer that was clearly involved in uh, stalking and harassing me and uh, turned my camera on her and I interviewed her, I told her I was filming, told her what was going on, asked her why she wouldn't help, why she wouldn't take a report, basically, um, if they could run up the chain of command, you know, a bunch of different things. And I posted that on YouTube right away. and the stalking and harassment got worse. Everywhere I would go, there were police cruisers pulling into the parking lot, aiming at me, have their lights on, um, almost everywhere I went. And there was there was some other street theater on the road lot that uh, was going on to complete waste of tax money to intimidate somebody that uh, they have an issue with for some reason because this uh, person that's on the uh, this Department of Homeland Security scam. So anyway, posted that video December of 2017, January 4th. I go to the store. I've got a group of white cars, some that are already sitting there waiting like they normally are, some that are pulling in. Guy follows me into the store at the exact same time I go in, and while I'm getting my coffee, he's just standing there at this chip aisle, and he's just trying to lock eyes with me. And then I look up, and then he looks down, and he's sitting there just messing with his bag of chips. I've, I've requested, subpoenaed the video footage from that day. And then when the 911 call came in, the guy said this was in front of QT. Um, they said if they have incidents, um, that are reported on their premises, uh, that they'll save that. They'll be able to go back and get it. So they should be able to go back and get the, um, the video surveillance footage that we've subpoenaed 
that I had to ask my attorney to do a motion discovery to get all this other information, the body camera information, the 911 call, um, and then have to subpoena the video footage from the convenience store. So they don't make this an easy process to try to prove, um, especially when your attorney's like, well, what could this prove? Why would he even want this video? Why would we want it? What's it gonna show? A lot of things could show that these people were sitting there waiting and that the exact same time I get out of my vehicle, they get out of their vehicle and then follow me into the store and then face directly at me and then do something weird to get my attention. They're all usually in the same color car. Um, and then when I leave, as I'm backing out and pulling away, the first white car puts their reverse lights on, starts backing up at me like they're gonna hit me. They always do this every single day. Or pull up to a stop sign and act like they're gonna run the stop sign. They did it while my daughter was driving the car. Um, And then it would show that the, that guy, this guy, um, the name is on the 911 call. His name is Russell Roberts. And there's some very interesting information about this guy. That will come up in the 911 call. So I'm already six minutes in. I'm just looking at my notes here and thinking which uh, direction I should go here. So anyway, guy Russell Roberts, as I'm leaving, backs his truck out. As I'm coming around the corner, you know, most people just wait for the car coming around the corner. And I pulled up next to him, filmed the side of his truck um, to get the information on the side of his truck, get his license plate, try to do some, you know, some kind of detective work. They call the police, they're not helping. Call everyone, the FBI, they hang up on you. So I'm trying to do some of my own investigation. And I follow this guy out into traffic to get that information on his vehicle after he just did the whole little skit in the store with me. And uh, I'm driving next to him trying to get the information off his truck and he rolls down his window and he says like, what's up? I have this, this is what I'm talking about, I have this on video. I said, I'm doing a little documentary on gang stalkers. You know what that is? Something, something to that effect. And uh, he said, gang stalking, yeah, I've heard of that, I've heard of that. And then he changes his mind and says, uh, no, wait, what, what is gang stalking? And uh, I said something like, you know, it was like 4.50 in the morning. I was pretty tired. I said something like, somebody you may be. Something like that. And I was tired. Uh, and I'm pulling, yeah, that we have that exchange. I pull away. As I'm pulling away, the guy yells, faggot ass, faggot ass, like yourself. I, it didn't make any sense. It's on video. You can hear it. I, um, that video, I'm not sure when to play that one. I don't know. <sighs> seems to be the only thing I can do is put these videos on here. Nothing else seems to work. Okay, and more proof that this is, I'm going to talk about this before I play this this uh, video. More proof this is going on, that these people actually do follow targeted individuals all over the place, on foot and in vehicles. It's right there on the FBI's website. The SSG, the Special Surveillance Group, or the Secret Surveillance Group, it's not that secret if it's right there on their website. Anyway, the SSG is funded by the FBI. They send these people out to uh, Virginia to their headquarters, train them for nine weeks, and they send them back out on the road to perform in foot surveillance and vehicle surveillance. That's just one. That's just one group. There's so many more that do this. Government contracts, government bidding. They know the right person. They get the contract worth billions of dollars, literally. All right, so, and, and then people that are trying to get the word out about this, they've got, you know, these 
set up kit groups like this guy is working in that uh, like to go around and try to get people thrown in jail that are trying to expose what they're doing. So I'm going to play this video. I didn't even finish my story about the driving down the street. I'm going to play the video or play the uh, 911 call. I'm just going to stop it and, and explain. I can't even talk this morning. I'm pretty tired. I'm going to stop the audio while it's playing the first time, explain what's going on, and then uh, I'll play it all the way through the second time. I'm sorry if you're having a hard time hearing me. I'm doing my best this morning. This takes a lot of energy out of you. Okay, here it is. 911, where is your emergency? I saw a gentleman pull a gun on me. Okay, where did this happen at? Uh, Avenue Boulevard. Oh, no. We are right in front of the QT at Van Buren. Okay, so you guys were at the Q Okay, so I have to stop it right there. This guy says that I pulled a gun on him in front of the QT. By the time we had had this exchange, and I yelled, I yelled at him. I yelled, "Fuck you!" Uh, you know, what person wouldn't eventually tell somebody "fuck you" after they've been followed around for years? You know, some days you just had it. The guy pulls a gun out. Waves it out of his window, so I see it. I immediately make a U-turn and go back to my house. The guy follows me back to my house. The QT? Uh, yeah, we were leaving the QT. Okay, okay. So, you were leaving QT. And how long did this happen? Right now. He's right in front of me. He still, does he still have a gun on you? Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, well, no, he's pointing it at him. Okay, so did you hear that right, right now? The guy... Turned around and followed me. He's following me, following me down Avondale. He's telling the police officer that I'm in front of them, so that means that they're following me. And he's just pulled a gun on me, and he's saying that while he's on the phone, I'm aiming a gun at him. Okay. He's pointing at you. Yeah. Yeah. He's pointing at me right now. I mean, you said phone. you're on Avondale, correct? Yep, down. we're heading uh, southbound, passing Coldwater Springs, passing the police department right now, headed towards MC-85. Heading southbound on Avondale? Okay, and he still, you can still see that gun pointed at you? No, he pulled up next to me as we were heading northbound. Okay. And he pulled a gun on me. Okay. Okay, so now his story changed. He remembered where he had done that, and then he said that I pulled a gun on him. I literally have the guy on video with his arm out the window holding a gun. So you guys were driving and then he pulled up to the side of you and pointed the gun at you and now you guys are going southbound on Avondale, correct? Yeah, two police officers just fucking passed you just now. Yeah, they, yeah, they're getting the traffic right now. They're going to do a U-turn right now. What type of vehicle is now it that he's in? We are, uh, it's a Toyota 4Runner. We are heading uh, westbound on Maricopa Road. Following me. Okay, westbound on Maricopa. All right, what type of Toyota? Uh, like a 4Runner. Black 4Runner. White male, gray hat driving with some sort of yellow and red and shitty ball cap on. Okay. So I have a black and colored Toyota 4Runner, and this is a vehicle chasing you, correct? Yes. Okay, what vehicle are you in? I'm in, I'm in, front, I'm in front of him now. Huh? He's in front of me? The guy followed me to my house. He's in this construction-type truck. It's got white and yellow lights. Follows me to my house, where my kids are sleeping, and thinks I'm going to pull into my driveway or, or something. But he's say, now he's saying... Yeah, we didn't get that far anyway. Now he's saying that he's in front of me. How did he know where my house is if he's in front of me? Which he never got in front of me. He was behind me the, the entire time. I'm fine. I 
Why is there police officer? That ain't I, talk to me. He's not delaying anything. We have a couple officers headed to your location. Yeah. Okay. Notice he just said, I used to be a police officer. Or I'm a police Let's. He says it again. Right now. What vehicle are you okay, in? We just passed 117th Avenue. 117th in Maricopa? Yes, we are in the roundabout. Still heading around, completely around the roundabout. So we are still going westbound in the roundabout. Okay. The outer roundabout. Passing uh, 118th okay. Drive. Can we open a stop sign? Okay, come up to a stop sign, 118th Drive. Yes. Okay. And what vehicle are you in? That's when we got to my house. This guy followed me two blocks after pulling a gun on me. Followed me to my house. And I'm... Yeah. I'm supposed to call the police. I'm supposed to call 911 and tell the police that have been stalking and harassing me also that this just happened. Doesn't sound like the first option I would think of. If police cruisers have been driving by me for months, lighting their, hitting their lights, sirens, right when they go by me, doing weird street theater, showing up everywhere I go. Those are the guys I'm supposed to call. I'm a white Dodge 1500 work vehicle, and I have a white yellow beacon light ahead of me, on top of me. Okay. He's turned uh, right on 118th, 118th lane. Okay, 118th lane, that other vehicle, the Toyota? Yep, and he has stopped. He has stopped. The so I pulled to the right instead of pulling in my driveway. Because that's the street I live on, the one he's talking about. Pulled in front of my mailboxes in front of this other car, and I was thinking, you know what? I'm just going to get out, and I'm going to hop the fence, hop a couple neighbor's fences, hope I don't get bit by a dog, and hope this guy doesn't shoot me. And call 911, or I, don't, I hadn't thought that far ahead yet. But I started getting out of my truck, and, I and then I noticed this guy is just sitting there around the corner so I can't see him. All I can see are these lights. And uh, for some reason, I decided, you know what, I'm getting back in my truck. I'm gonna take, get this guy away from my house, away from where my kids are, and go get through the neighborhood. And uh, I got to the other side of the neighborhood. I drove through, through my neighborhood too fast. I admit that. I was trying to get away from a guy with a, a gun that had just pulled a gun on me. Got through the neighborhood, I had my windows down the whole time. I heard a helicopter and saw a spotlight. I thought, these guys set me up. These guys are trying to either shoot me or I don't I didn't couldn't process exactly what they were trying to do, but I knew that I was in a bad situation. And the police that had been stalking and harassing me for such a long time are now that have some kind of reason to come after me. And I thought, that guy, that guy in there seemed like a cop. He seemed like a cop. There were some other things that like some signals kind of, uh, some weird covert messages that they do, uh, kind of made me think the same thing. And it turns out, this guy is a former police officer. What are the odds of that? Like really, what are the odds of that? This guy that, that says, <laughs> that, that they let, when they, okay, when they arrested me that morning, this guy was standing outside of the police cruiser with his arms folded laughing at me. Thought, he thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> laughing at me. What police department lets somebody do that? Directly to the right. Okay, so he's so that lane. He is in his vehicle, and he's out of his vehicle. It looks like he's out of, at the, uh, uh, at the, uh... Is this guy drinking? 
mailbox. Okay, so you now he's out of the vehicle near the mailbox? Right next to the mailbox. What's that? You said he's by the mailbox now? Yeah. Now he's driving away. Now he's driving away? Take it off. Yeah, he's taking off. Okay. That's him. That's him. Alright, I'm gonna let you go, man. I'm gonna stay way behind the house. So this guy's got his really bright yellow and light yellow and white lights just lit up, rotating, lighting up the whole block. He was by himself in his truck. I didn't see anybody in his truck with him. I'm pretty sure I got video of him. I think I pointed the camera at him. Um, yeah, I did. He keeps referring to we. Who's he talking about? We who? Him and... And then who did he say, there he goes? Who was he talking to? Because there was no police officer behind me going through the neighborhood. I never saw any lights until I got all the way to the other side of my neighborhood and there was a police officer at the exit out to the main road. So I decided, hey, they're looking for somebody. This might be me. I most likely just got set up. Pulled my truck around, parked under a light. I got out and put my hands up. There's, there's more to this story also, but the couple of things they did. Uh, sir, sir, let me do a felony stop on them. Okay, but... I'm going to play this all the way through again. I might even do another video. I don't know. But this is hard to process, all of this. We talk about it. But you were able to make contact with one of our officers? Yeah, yeah, he pulled it right behind me. He's after him now. Okay, he's after him. Okay, I need you to stay in one area, though, because another officer needs to make contact so you can press charges against this person who did this. Damn. That's not a problem, ma'am. That's okay. not a problem with you. Not a problem, ma'am. That was our goal this morning. So, okay, what's your uh, name and telephone number? My name is Russell Roberts. My phone number, I'll give you both my phone numbers if I think you. The first one is phone number. <laughs> Alright, I have both of your numbers in here. I'm gonna go ahead and Sorry, I don't see the wrong office. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Alright, I have both of your numbers in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. And again, the officers are trying to get them to pull over right now. No problem. I have no clue where they went. I mean, they are the ones. Okay. Okay. Alright, again, uh, we're gonna have an officer make contact with you here shortly after they try to find that guy, okay? Well, they're behind them, so I just. Okay. I oh, there you go. Okay, if anything else changes, like say you see that car and there's no officer near them, um, give us a call back, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. Bye, man. All right, bye-bye. Okay, I'm just going to play it again uh, in the entirety. 911, where is your emergency? I said, i going to pull a gun on me. Okay, where did this happen at? Uh, Avenue Boulevard. We are right in front of the QT at Van Buren. Okay, so you guys were at the QT? Uh, yeah, we were leaving the QT. Okay, you were leaving QT. And how long did this happen? Right now, he's right in front of me. He's still, does he still have the gun on you? Yes, he is, he is. Yeah, well, no, he's pointing at Adam. He's pointing at you? Yeah. I, you said you're on Avondale, correct? Yep, we're heading uh, southbound, passing Coldwater Springs, passing the police department right now, headed towards MC-85. Heading southbound on Avondale? Okay, and he still, you can still see that gun pointed at you? No, he pulled up next to me as we were heading northbound. Okay. And he pulled a gun on me. Okay. So you guys were driving and then he pulled up to the side of you and pointed the gun at you, and now you guys are going southbound on Avondale, correct? 
Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they're getting the traffic right now. They're going to do a U-turn right now. What type of vehicle is yeah, it that he's in? Yeah, uh, it's a Toyota 4Runner. We are heading uh, westbound on Maricopa Road. Okay, westbound on Maricopa. All right, what type of Toyota? Yeah, like a 4Runner. Black 4Runner. White male, gray hat driving with some sort of yellow and red insignia ball cap on. Okay. So I have a black and colored Toyota 4Runner. This is a vehicle chasing you, correct? Yes. Okay, what vehicle are you in? I'm in, I'm in, front, I'm in front of him now. I'm How do you say police officer? I'm talking to you not delaying anything. We have a couple officers headed to your location yes. right now. What vehicle are yes, you sir. in? We just passed 117th Avenue. 117th in Maricopa? Yes, we are in the roundabout. Still heading around, completely around the roundabout. So we are still going westbound in the roundabout. Okay. The outer roundabout. Passing uh, 118th Drive. Okay. Coming over to the stop sign. Okay, coming up to the stop sign, 118th Drive. Yes. Okay. And what vehicle are you in? I am a white Dodge 1500 work vehicle, and I have a white yellow vehicle right ahead of me, on top of me. Okay. He turned right on 118th, 118th Lane. Okay, 118th Lane, that other vehicle, the Toyota? Yep, and he has stopped. He has stopped directly to the right. Okay, so he stopped. that lane. He is in his vehicle, and he's out of his vehicle. It looks like he's out of, at the, uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, mailbox. Okay, so now he's out of the vehicle near the mailbox? He's right by the mailbox. What's that? You said he's by the mailbox now? Yeah. Now he's driving away. Now he's driving away? Take it off. Yeah, he's taking off. Okay. That's him. That's him. Alright, I'm gonna let you go, ma'am. I wanna stay way behind the officers. There may be a felony on him. Okay, but you were able to make contact with one of our officers? Yeah, yeah, he pulled it right behind me. He's after him now. Okay, he's after him. Okay, I need you to stay in one area, though, because another officer needs to make contact so you can press charges against this person who did this. That's not a problem, ma'am. That's okay. not a problem with you. So. Okay. What's your uh, name and telephone number? My name is Russell Roberts. Phone number. <laughs> Sorry, I don't see that one office. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, I have both of your numbers in here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And again, the officers are trying to get them to pull over right now. No problem. I have no clue where they went. I mean, they are the ones. Okay. Okay. All right, again, um, we're going to have an officer make contact with you here shortly after they try to find that guy, okay? Well, they're behind them, so I just... Okay. I oh, there you go. Okay, if anything else changes, like say you see that car and there's no officer near them, um, g give us a call back, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. Bye, ma'am. All right, bye-bye. Sounds like he realized he screwed that whole thing up at the end. Yeah. All right. That was the 911 call. Ridiculous. I don't even know what to call it. I didn't know people did this. I'm at a loss for words right now. I should probably redo this video. I don't know. Everybody's going to complain that they can't hear it. Uh, hopefully the 911 call was loud enough. All right. Everybody have a good Labor Day.